September 14th, 1995. Dear Diary, Today was a pretty surreal first day of the outside tour. Me and the boys were in the middle of soundcheck when David Bowie walked in. I've always been a huge fan of his and I was so excited to finally be performing with him. But then things got a little awkward. We were running through closer when Bowie walked out to the stage and started dancing along. At first I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, who wouldn't want to see David Bowie dance to their music, right? But then he started getting a little too into it. He was gyrating his hips and making these weird facial expressions. I couldn't help but laugh. It was like he was trying to outdo me. And then, to make things even more awkward, he started singing along. But it wasn't to Closer, God no, he was singing the lyrics to Starman over our song. I didn't know what to do. Should I stop the song and let him take over? Should I just keep playing and hope he gets the hint? In the end, we just kept playing and I tried my best to ignore him. But every time I looked over, there he was, still dancing and singing like he was auditioning to be a caged dancer in some sleazy fetish bar. I love David Bowie, don't get me wrong, but today was just a little too much. I just hope that tomorrow's sound check goes a little more smoothly. Until then, Trent. September 17th, 1995. Dear Diary, Today was quite an eventful day on tour with David Bowie. We were backstage before the show, and I was still feeling a little nervous about performing with him. I mean, this is David fucking Bowie, the man who inspired me to start making music in the first place. As we were chatting, I noticed he had a strange look on his face. I couldn't quite figure out what was going on until I looked down and realized I had accidentally spilled mustard all over my shirt. I tried to play it cool, but Bowie couldn't stop staring at the bright yellow stain on my chest. Feeling embarrassed, I decided to try to make a joke out of it. I guess I'll have to change my shirt before we go on stage, I said, trying to laugh it off. But Bowie just looked at me with a straight face and said, You know what they say, Trent. Mustard stains never really come out. And then he walked away. I was left standing there, feeling like an idiot with a mustard-stained shirt and no comeback. Besides that, the show went pretty well. Bye for now, Trent. September 20th, 1995. Dear Diary, Today was one of those moments where I wish I could just crawl into a hole and die. We're on tour with David Bowie, and I had just finished my set when I spotted him in the green room. I was so excited to see him that I practically ran over to him to say hello. But as I got closer to God, I tripped over a cable and stumbled right into him, knocking him over. We both fell to the ground pretty hard. And to make matters worse, I accidentally let out a huge fart when I hit the ground. I was mortified. David was a total pro about it and tried to play it cool, but I could tell he was really uncomfortable. It also took him a while to get back up, so I'm sure he smelled it. I apologized profusely and tried to make small talk, but it was all just too damn awkward. After what felt like an eternity, he finally excused himself and left the room. I feel like such an idiot. But hey, at least I can say I knocked over David Bowie and farted in his face. That's got to count for something, right? He avoided eye contact with me the rest of the night. Until next time, Trent. September 22nd, 1995. Dear Diary, Today was one of the most awkward moments of my life, and once again, it involved David Bowie. We're currently on tour together, and last night we decided to go out for drinks after the show. For once, everything was going great until Bowie started talking about his obsession with llamas. I mean, who talks about llamas for more than five minutes? But Bowie went on and on about how he would give up his music career to start a llama farm. He even showed us a picture of a llama that he keeps in his fucking wallet. I tried to change the subject multiple times, but Bowie kept bringing it back to llamas. I even tried to make a joke about how we should collaborate on a song about llamas. But he just stared at me and called me a fucking idiot. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore and excused myself to go to the bathroom. As I was washing my hands, Bowie came in and started talking to me about llamas again. He didn't even need to go to the bathroom. He came in there just to talk to me about llamas. I couldn't escape. I just smiled and nodded, hoping he would get the hint that I wasn't interested in talking about llamas anymore. But nope, he just kept going on and on until I finally made up an excuse to leave. Lesson learned, never bring up llamas around David Bowie. Trent. September 27th, 1995. 
Dear Diary, Today was a strange one. I found myself in a heated argument with David Bowie over something completely ridiculous. We were both backstage waiting for our sound checks when I noticed he was making himself a cup of tea and some hard-boiled eggs. I couldn't help but notice that he was boiling the water first and then adding the eggs, which I know is completely wrong. Everyone knows you're supposed to put the eggs in the water first along with a pinch of salt and then bring it to a boil. So I pointed this out to him and we got into a heated discussion about it. David became extremely defensive and declared that his method was better, saying that it helped to prevent the eggs from cracking, but I was having none of it. I argued that putting the eggs in the water first helped to prevent the eggs from overcooking and getting a rubbery texture. Not only that, he also insisted that adding salt made no difference whatsoever. We went back and forth on this for what felt like hours, each of us growing increasingly frustrated with the other's stubbornness. At one point, he even threatened to kick me off the rest of the tour if I didn't agree with him, but I still stood my ground. Things even got a bit physical at one point. He pushed me, so I retaliated and threw a hard-boiled egg at his head. But he just dodged it and continued to argue his side. In the end, we had to agree to disagree. David went back to his eggs, and I sulked off to my dressing room. I never thought I'd have a disagreement with David Bowie over something as trivial as boiling eggs. But I guess this is my life now. Tomorrow's another show, and I hope there will be more exciting things to talk about. Until then... Trent.